If you want me to continue with my work, it is crucial to support the channel via Patreon. Moreover, make sure to subscribe to Bobby's Perspective on Rumble. All the links are in the description box below. May Allah bless you all. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, we're still in the midst of the conflict between Palestine and Israel. As usual, mainstream media is slandering the Palestinians, calling them terrorists, displaying their alleged atrocities on the Israeli population. So basically, nothing changed here. The Muslims are still the bad guy. Guys, we find ourselves in the day and age of information. It is an information age after all. However, when it comes down to war, people forget that fact. Information controls everything, controls the narrative. And this is why this war is is a war of information, of course. The side that gets their narrative, their information out to the public first, wins the narrative and with it wins the support of the people. This is truly what it boils down to. The Israelis want the support of the world. Why? So they can commit the atrocities that they are blaming the Palestinians for. Allegedly, Palestinians killed 250 people at that music festival. However, we have no true confirmation of those numbers. The only thing we really got is a video of people fleeing that concert. Many more atrocious claims have been made by the Israeli side and what not. However, yet again, we have no hard numbers, nor do we have any evidence for that claim. Yet again, whoever controls the information wins this war. This is why it is so important for us to shed a light on Palestine and show the truth. Today, guys, we're going to react to an Israeli mother that met Palestinians firsthand during the so-called attack. Before we jump into the video, guys, as always, if you appreciate my work, please leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box to further support this channel. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. I started to be a kid, the kids still had a lot of fun. I went to the university to be with them, and I took them to the university. Rotem, from the university of Gaza, they were with a girl born in the 6th century, and they were in the 4th century. I showed them that there were people who were afraid of the house of my house, and I showed them the stories in Arabic in my house. אני מנסה להחזיק את דלת הממ"ד, שהם לא יצליחו לפתוח, <laughs> אבל כמובן ששישה מחבלים שהיו בתוך הבית שלי הצליחו לפתוח את הדלת. הם ירו כדור אחד על הדלת כדי לפתוח, במזל הדלת נפתחה והכדור רק שרט אותי והמשיך ופגע בארון, והם נכנסים, ואני אומרת להם, יש לי פה שני ילדים. הדבר הראשון שאני אמרת להם, בעברית. אני, אה, לא, באנגלית. <אז> הם מסתכלים, ואז אחד אומר לי, באנגלית, אה, אל תדאגי, אני מוסלמי, אנחנו לא נפגע בכם. <אז> And this is something that the mainstream media doesn't want you to see, of course. The Muslims have to fulfill the narrative of the mainstream media, which is they are the violent, barbaric terrorists, of course. And moreover, Islam is responsible for their savage behavior. Those Muslims kill civilians, and this is what Islam teaches. The truth, as always, is, of course, the opposite. In the Quran and in the Hadith, we have explicit warning not to attack non-combatants, not to kill women children, the elderly, monks, etc. So this war conduct, this behavior comes directly from the Islamic teachings. So those Muslims here behaved exactly how Muslims should behave in a war situation. And this is why it is yet again so extremely hypocritical. The West will blame Islam for having a war strategy. Meanwhile, everybody goes to war. America being, of course, the top contender on that list. America is the world police and attacks everything they can. Now, is there any specific war conduct that the Americans obey by? No, it's pretty vague. And then in the end, the winner will determine who committed all kinds of war.
war atrocities, war crimes, war crimes. In Islam, however, we have a teaching for every aspect of life, spiritually, socially, and yes, when it comes down to war as well. And one of those things is to not kill non-combatants. And this is why those Palestinian Muslims here acted in accordance to Islam. If you cannot see the beauty in this, nobody can help you. The the facility be מצד אחד בהפתעה, מצד שני זה הוריד לי הרבה לחץ. וישבתי עם הילדים שלי, והמחבלים אה, הביאו כיסא מהפינת אוכל. היה אה, מחבל חמוש כל הזמן איתנו בממ"ד, והשאר מסתובבים בבית. אחד מהם רואה על השיש בננות, אומר לי, אפשר לאכול אחת? אמרתי <laughs> לו, כן, אתה יכול לאכול אחת. מה הילדים אומרים? אה, הגדול קצת יותר נלחץ. הקטנה לא ממש הזיז לה, הייתה עסוקה בטאבלט שלה. מה שכן הפחיד אותם קצת זה הנשק. היה איזה קונסיליום שלהם ליד הממ"ד די בהתחלה. הם דיברו בערבית, והבן שלי שואל אותי, הם עכשיו חושבים איך להתנצל? אמרתי לו שכנראה שלא. בסוף השעתיים האלה, אחד מהם סוגר לי את דלת הממ"ד, והם יוצאים. All right, so that's already it for today's short clip. I really hope that this puts things into perspective. Of course, the mainstream media machinery will push their narrative as much as they can. And as I said in the previous video, the Christian conservatives will, of course, push the narrative, the pro-Israeli narrative as well. However, in this day and age of information, in this day and age of social media, we do have the power in our hands. We can share the information as well. We can dictate what goes viral by sharing the videos. This is why I urge you to share pro-Palestinian content, of course, or before the Zionists start screaming anti-Semitism. Yet again, let's just say not only pro-Palestinian content, but simply objective content. Let's really show what is happening down there. As you saw, this was an Israeli woman and she got attacked by Palestinian soldiers. However, you saw it yourself. Those Palestinian soldiers entered and said, hey, don't worry we are muslim something yet again that you won't hear in the west if you hear somebody entered your house and they said oh we are muslim the next thing you expect is of course a bombing an explosion terrorists came and killed everybody they killed the woman they killed her and everybody dead but this yet again couldn't be any further from the truth you saw they simply inspected the house they relieved the woman by telling her hey we are muslims we are believers we're not gonna attack you you are safe i want to end this video with the words of the first caliph abu Bakr al sadiq abu Bakr al sadiq the first caliph told his military commander stop all people that i may give you 10 rules for guidance on the battlefield do not commit treachery or deviate from the right path. You must not mutilate dead bodies. Do not kill a woman, a child, or an aged man. Do not cut down fruitful trees. Do not destroy inhabited areas. Do not slaughter any of the enemy's sheep, cow, or camel, except for food. Do not burn date palms, nor inundate them. Do not embezzle, nor misappropriation of booty or spoils of war, nor be guilty of cowardness. You are likely to pass by people who have devoted their lives to monastic services. Leave them alone. And now let's contrast that with Samuel 15, which is found in the Old Testament of the Christian Bible, but is found in the Hebrew Bible as well. So this is a passage that Jews and Christians share. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. So the Christian and Jewish scriptures call for the utter destruction of women, men, children, and even animals. The Islamic scriptures, on the other hand, stand in exact opposition to that. I'll let you decide who the bad guys are. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to further support this channel via Patreon, for example, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.